This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. Three mothers and six children from a Mormon family are burned alive in Mexico. Plus, two homicide suspects escape from a California jail. And Lamar Jackson and the Ravens hand the Patriots their first loss of 2019. Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm Araceli Barriga. And I'm Damian Gordon. Nine members of a Mormon family were killed in Mexico after their cars were ambushed and blown up. Another seven children were hurt and flown from Mexico to Arizona for medical attention. The murder victims consisted of three women, four small children, and two infants. Investigators believe three vehicles traveling from Sonora and Chihuahua were ambushed by criminal groups last night. In each of the three cars attacked, a mother was driving children to see family. After the cars were shot at, police say that they were set on fire. Police say it may have been a case of mistaken identity. The impeachment inquiry in Washington rolls on this week. Today, House Democrats have released transcripts of the testimony of two key figures in the impeachment inquiry. Democrats also are requesting the appearance of acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney before the committee. It is widely expected that the request will be rejected. Chairs of the committee believe that Mulvaney helped President Trump and his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, withhold aid from Ukraine. Mulvaney is the highest ranked official to be subpoenaed in the inquiry as it reaches its public phase. A man was stabbed to death outside a Popeye's restaurant in Maryland over the chain's popular chicken sandwich. It started when someone cut in front of the line, which led to an altercation inside the restaurant. Somebody cut in front of the other. Okay. Um, for you to get that angry over anything, um, for that type of anger to develop into um, this type of violence, again, is a very sad and tragic day. And that person needs to turn themselves in. No suspects have yet been arrested. It is sex positive week here at CSUN. Matador news reporter Tyler Rigel is live in the newsroom with more. Thanks, Damien. It's Sex Positive Week at CSUN's campus, and students are ready to remove the stigma attached to the word sex. Coordinators at the Pride Center are encouraging students to attend the workshops to teach them all about safe sex practices. It's vital to not just the campus, but probably the whole community, uh, just because the more informed you are, the better decisions you can make. Um, and again, just to destigmatize all of you know the quote unquote negative constructs that are associated with uh, healthy sex habits, I think the more you know, the better you can you know make decisions for yourself or your partner. Workshops are available through Thursday in the University Student Union. We talk to students on campus to get their take on the importance of this week. I think it's beneficial to have a safe sex positive week on campus because I think it happens kind of more often than people would think. And so the more educated you are, the more aware you are of trying to be as safe as possible using protection whenever you can, the better it is for everyone on campus to reduce more stigmas. It's important for people to learn because, you know, you, you don't ever know what you may come across in the future, so um, learning about it now can help you in the future. It's always nice to, like, attend seminars or, like, attend events because you might learn something that you might not know before. To learn more, you can also head to Instagram at Positive Sexuality CSUN. Now, back to Araceli in the studio. The two homicide suspects who escaped Monterey County Jail early Sunday morning are still at large. We're in the midst of the investigation to figure out exactly when that hole first appeared, um, how it was generated. That's a big part of the investigation that we're still working through. The suspects were not reported missing until the roll call Sunday morning. Santos, Fonseca, and Jonathan Salza escaped by creating a hole above the ceiling of their bathroom. On the other side of the wall was a space that houses pipes for plumbing, which led them outside the jail. With the jail under construction, it made it easier for the inmates to escape. The government in Delhi, India, has launched a two-week car rationing system meant to reduce the catastrophic air pollution in the capital city. The plan is to have private vehicles alternate days on the road. Cars with a registration number ending in odd numbers on one day and even numbers on the next. Delhi officials say that this will keep about a million and a half cars off the road daily. Residents say the pollution has many causes, including burning of tons of crop waste and the lack of resources to dispose uh, of them. I'm sure there are machines available to cut those uh, crops, which is a waste, rather than burning them. 
which is the solution and it is happening every uh, time of the year in, in November. On the 1st of November, a public health emergency was announced as the air quality index went over 700. A safe level for all people is around the 50 mark. The air has sent thousands to the hospital, with some saying it burns their eyes when they step outside. One official says the air in the country is so bad that every single person living in India is a smoker by default. A brush fire sparking in North Azusa was reportedly caused by a car crash on Highway 39. Two people involved in the crash have been taken to the hospital. Officials say the crash happened about 12.30 this morning. The fire is halfway contained. Meanwhile, officials say the biggest fire in California, the Kincaid Fire in Sonoma County, ranging for 11 days, is now 80% contained. The fire has burned nearly 80,000 acres, about double the size of San Francisco. Firefighters say they are expected to have the fire fully contained by Thursday. The fire has destroyed 374 buildings. And in Ventura County, the Maria Fire is more than 80% contained. The blaze erupted Thursday and burned over 90,000 acres. The county's Office of Education says some schools will remain closed until ash is removed. Now, let's pass it to Omar James for the latest on health news. All right, cool. Thanks, Damien. African American has the largest increase in drug overdose deaths. The deaths involve opioids and synthetic opioids such as fentanyl. The CDC says fentanyl accounted for almost two-thirds of the deaths. From 2015 to 2017, almost all racial and ethnic groups in all age groups have experienced significant increases in opioid-involved and synthetic opioid-involved overdoses. The death rates from those overdoses more than doubled for the African Americans between ages 45 and 54. A group called Legal Cannabis for Consumer Safety is urging California to adopt tougher safety rules for ingredients and devices used in vaping. This is in response to a mysterious outbreak of illnesses apparently linked to vaping. Over 1,600 people have been affected nationwide and 33 people have died. And in most cases involved the products containing the marijuana compound THC. The group also wants to ban the use of additives, cutting agents, and artificial flavoring known to be harmful in cannabis vaping products. Now, let's go to Yarzef Tapia for the latest in business news. Thank you, Omar. Over 1,000 Google employees have signed a letter demanding Google to do more to combat climate change. The letter says Google workers, in agreement with the gravity and urgency of the global climate crisis, call on Google to commit and release a company-wide climate plan. Earlier this year, Google announced it would spend $2 billion on renewable energy infrastructure, but employees believe the tech giant needs to do more. Apple announces its plan to spend $2.5 billion to help with California's housing crisis. The company's plan to invest $1 billion for affordable housing and $1 billion on mortgage assistance for first-time buyers. Apple also plans to use land it owns valued at $300 million for development. The $200 million remaining will go towards San Francisco's housing. Officials say around 7,000 people there are homeless due to the shortage of affordable housing in the Bay Area. Apple says the money will be distributed within two years, depending on the availability of projects. Let's go back to Omar for the update on sports. We're over the halfway home mark in the NFL season as week nine has officially come to a close. Prescott gets it complete as Cooper takes it all the way. The Dallas Cowboys defeated the New York Giants on Monday Night Football behind a strong offensive performance by Dak Prescott and company. He's going to try to lean in, and he's in. Touchdown. Orlando Brown has hold of his quarterback and falls backwards and literally pulls him across the line. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens handed Tom Brady and the Patriots their first loss of the season. Wilson starts the game four for four, and now he falls to the end zone, rocket, touchdown! The Seahawks needed overtime to defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in arguably the most thrilling game of the weekend. The Seahawks are set to take on the only undefeated team left, the San Francisco 49ers, next week on Monday Night Football. The 2019 Major League Soccer MVP is Carlos Vela. Vela is a LAFC forward and scored 36 goals and 15 assists in just 33 matches, winning him the 2019 Golden Boot Award. I want to be here. I feel this is my home, and it's 
the owners don't make me go home <laughs> soon, I will be here for a long time. LAFC had a historic season, securing the supporters' shield for the most regular season points. The club fell just short in the playoffs after losing 3-1 to one to the Seattle Saunders in the Western Conference Finals. The MLS Cup Final is set to take place Sunday between the Seattle Saunders and Toronto FC. Let's toss it to Lily Morales in the newsroom with more on the Lakers. Thanks, Omar. The Lakers on Sunday night defeated San Antonio Spurs 103-96. LeBron James had a triple-double with 21 points, 11 rebounds, and 13 assists. Anthony Davis led his team in scoring with 25 points and 11 rebounds. Yesterday, Davis paid a visit to his alma mater, Prospective Charter School, in his hometown of Chicago. Davis was asked whether he'd play for the Bulls. He says he is thinking about it. We asked season students what they think about Davis uh, leaving. I understand he is from Chicago, so he might want to go back home. But I think if the Lakers win the championship, he's going to stay. Or if they go pretty far in the playoffs, he's going to stay. That's false, man. He has a great season so far in the Lakers. The Lakers look really good this year with LeBron, Kuzma, a couple of other players too. Uh, they're at, they could win a championship this year, and if they win a championship this year, there's no other place. Anthony Davis is going to go but stay in, the, uh, in L.A. and re-sign with the Lakers again. <laughs> why, would he, why would he do that? Uh, that's honestly like, that's cap. We are 5-1 and one right now. We have won five straight. This team looks like they're poised to win a championship. He's, he's good here. You know, he's in L.A. He's living the L.A. life. I really don't see why he'd go to Chicago. He'd go to cold Chicago and show there with who? Zach Levine? What's he going to do there? No, no. Now let's go back to the studio with Omar with more sports. Dodgers fans will be pleased to hear outfielder Cody Bellinger was announced as a finalist for the National League Most Viable Player Award. Bellinger was also awarded the Golden Glove. And Dodgers pitcher Hun Jin Ryu was named a finalist for the NL Cy Young Award after posting a 2.32 ERA. It's pretty impressive. Now, let's go back to Yarzef with the latest in entertainment. If you're into racing movies, well then get ready for Ford vs. Ferrari. The movie, which premiered last night in Hollywood, stars Academy Award winner Christian Bale and Matt Damon. It's not your typical competitive racing story, but about two friends, Carol Shelby and Ken Miles, who partnered with Ford Motor Company to beat Italian sports car designer Enzo Ferrari at the 1966 Le Mans. The true story between the two automakers will premiere November 15th. Terminator Dark Fate bombs at the box office and it makes it the second major failed release for Paramount this year. Terminator was projected to open at about $40 million but grossed only $29 million in the U.S. and $102 million overseas. Despite good reviews and the highly anticipated return of James Cameron and Linda Hamilton, Dark Fate barely opened higher than 2015's Terminator Genesis that opened at $27 million. Variety reports Dark Fate costs $185 million to produce. Movies to look out for this week are All Americans, Playing With Fire, and Last Christmas. Now let's go back to Damien for the rundown on this week's weather. It is 73 degrees right now in Northridge. Today we will see a high of about 87 degrees with a clear sky and slight winds up to 4 miles per hour. Humidity sits around 20% today so you shouldn't have to worry about your hair. The weather will be beautiful for the rest of the week as we will be in the 80s for the next seven days with no clouds in sight. Adidas is partnering with International Space Station on a path towards innovation. The apparel company and the U.S. National Laboratory launched a multi-year partnership of which the two will work towards three phases. The vice president of global brand strategies for Adidas said their idea is to maximize the unique lab characteristics of the International Space Station like microgravity for production research with a focus on humans' performance for athletes. Part of what they will develop will be a 100% recyclable heel-to-toe performance shoe. The future crafts loops to contribute towards a step to sustainability. When these running shoes wear out, buyers can take them to Adidas who will reuse the shoes for their raw materials to make new ones. The future craft loops are expected to go on sale in 2021. I'm Araceli Barriga. I'm Yara Satapia. I'm Omar James. And I'm Damian Gordon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.